Colonel Emmett Cyclone Davis was a born leader who became one of the United States Air Force's greatest commanders both during and after World War II. His leadership skills and bravery, combined with his extraordinary abilities as a fighter pilot, earned the man called Cyclone 40 military decorations. He participated in over 220 combat missions in World War II and was revered by all those who served with him. Born in 1918 in Roosevelt, Utah, Davis grew up on his parents' farm, graduating from East High School in Salt Lake City in 1936. On December 7, 1941, Cyclone Davis was a young 22-year-old second lieutenant stationed at Wheeler Field in Hawaii. Amid the chaos and destruction of the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, Davis was able to save four U.S. aircraft from the burning flight line. Japanese fighters strafed him several times, and he clearly saw a grin on the face of one Japanese pilot who, for some reason, chose not to fire on him. Davis managed to break into the base's armament depot to obtain guns and ammunition for his P-40 Warhawk fighter and became one of the first pilots to take off from Wheeler while the Japanese attack was unfolding. Once airborne, he was ordered to Barber's Point on the southwest side of Oahu to investigate reports of an enemy landing. He investigated, but found no sign of the Japanese. Joining three more P-40s who had just taken off, Davis radioed for instructions and was told to escort a group of B-18 bombers out to sea in search of the Japanese fleet. Approaching the smoking remains of Pearl Harbor, U.S. Navy gunners mistook Davis's group of fighters for the enemy and opened fire on the friendly aircraft. Davis radioed his superiors that they would have to get the U.S. Navy under control before any fighter escort would be available. With that mission abandoned, Cyclone Davis ended up flying six patrol missions on December 7th and 8th, displaying unparalleled courage in the face of a devastating enemy attack. Rising quickly through the ranks, Davis was promoted to captain and then to major. He became the A-flight commander and operations officer of the 35th Pursuit Squadron stationed in Australia and later in the South Pacific. In 1943, Major Davis convinced his superiors to allow his elite squadron to upgrade from their aging P-39s to the newer P-40N fighters. After the change, his men renamed the 35th Squadron Cyclones Flying Circus. On the day after Christmas in 1943, Cyclone Davis and his men participated in one of the largest dogfights in American history engaging over 100 Japanese fighters in an epic battle over the Pacific. Well, I was leading my squadron about 15,000 feet above the landing area when I saw the first Japanese. He, was a, he looked like he was bombing, and I started after him, but he was quite a ways ahead of me. And I saw him just go down and pull into a cloud. So I pulled up, and as I pulled up, I saw two Japanese flying formation like this, and I pulled up and shot the rear airplane down, and I moved my sights up in front of the second airplane, and I shot him down. My wingman was Captain Troxel, and he said, nice shooting, Cyclone. Out of both ammunition and altitude, Cyclone returned to base. Back at the airfield, it was discovered that his armament chief had failed to put film into his gun camera. Since the battle had taken place over the open ocean, there was no way to count the number of downed enemy planes. Major Davis ended up with only two of his six possible kills confirmed, but he was still awarded the Silver Star for his actions. Following the war, Cyclone Davis's career took him in many directions. He led a team sent to Korea to evaluate the first F-84s and F-86s in combat. He also finished second in the Bendix Trophy Air Race, despite suffering a loss of cockpit pressurization in his F-84. Over the course of his long and remarkable career in aviation, Emmett Cyclone Davis 
epitomize the bravery and innovation that defines the U.S. Air Force to this day. Davis piloted over 100 different types of aircraft, from biplanes to supersonic fighters, many in combat. He earned the respect and admiration of his colleagues and, by all accounts, was one of the premier pilots and commanders of the United States Air Force. As one colleague observed, Cyclone Davis was born to lead.